I had read your piece probably around the time it came out uh, mm -hmm. on the suggestion of Pascal Robert and then revisited it again um, a few weeks back when I uh, was writing a piece for Sublation called Is the Contemporary Left uh, a Lifestyle Brand? Mm. And I... <laughs> I'm, between... I'd like to... Go ahead. Uh, oh, mm -hmm. oh, that is... Saying, I've seen that piece. Send it to me. Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely send it to you. But I definitely got a lot of inspiration from what you were, were writing in, in this non-site piece, as well as uh, Paul Prescott had sent me some uh, some of Ad uh, Adolf's, some of uh, Rustin's writing as well, which... Oh, yeah. uh, you know, and I think I even might, might have quoted some of it in the in that piece. I can't remember. Maybe it, even, it, it got edited out. But uh, I know Pascal is ready to uh, drop some some questions. He is prepared. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, you know, I really I I, uh, I really appreciated your piece. It was uh, it was very very. Um, you threw some haymakers in that one. You threw some haymakers in that piece. It was. It took me back to. Vintage Adolf Reed of the nineteen uh, nineties class huh. notes because you uh you spared you spared no uh no 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 victims to your pen in terms of getting at your point. The question I want to ask you is that I don't know if you're aware of this. Michelle and Barack Obama are sponsoring a uh, film adaptation on the life of Bayard Rustin for Netflix. Yeah. For Netflix. Yeah, I've heard uh, about it, and and. Uh, as you probably know, based on both of our positions on the Obamas, anything that they do for any kind of reason would immediately bring suspicion, particularly. Right. right. Now, we're going to Yeah, get have you heard anything about the thrust of the film or, or what it focuses on about Rustin? I haven't heard anything about the film. I haven't even seen a trailer. I don't even think there's a trailer released yet. Right. I think they have named who the actor is playing Rustin. Mm -hmm. But I was very circumspect with the fact that the Obamas were choosing Rustin as their uh, centerpiece to do right. a film on for Netflix. Right. But in in retrospect, and we do know about the tragic ending of of of, of, of Bayard Rustin's politics. Right. I'd like yep. to I'd like for you to explain. What at this particular particular contemporary moment caused you to reflect on Rustin as the avatar of this piece in the moment that we are right now? Well, it's kind of prosaic, man. I mean, um, Nonsite had already decided to do a special sin uh, where we published. Um, several of Rustin's less well-known essays that are, that are pretty powerful. Uh, and Preston Smith's fine piece on Black Plural Incorporation prior to 1965 was also going to be a part of that issue, um, along with uh, uh, Todd, Todd Cronin's uh, 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 a symposium around Todd, Todd Cronin's new book, Red Aesthetics. And I just... Uh, you know, what happened actually um, was I wrote an email to, to Ray and also Todd um, on um, some of my just reflection on my personal in, engagement with the BPP in, in the early 70s. And they both thought it would be good for me to, to expand that and uh, you know, to write it up. Uh, and it turned out that it worked for for a non site. I mean, Rustin has been an interesting figure because that's an. But that mid nineteen sixties moment, uh, you know, is an interesting moment. Uh, and look, like everybody else, as a young radical, I was not a fan of Bayard Rustin in, in uh, nineteen sixty five. I mean, I think I've mentioned on your podcast before that I came into the movement via Black Power, right, um, at, as a nineteen year old. Um, so I was primed to reject Rustin as an Uncle Tom or whatever else. Um, but why it's important to keep paying attention as, as history keeps evolving, right? Um, and, um, and in a lot of ways, so um, I mean, I'll grant that Rustin may well have um, been too optimistic about the 
potential for development of social democratic coalition that 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 he wanted at at, at the time. I don't know whether he was or not, because the point is that the black power stuff cut, cut into that effort from from one end, and the war cut into it from another end, right? Or the war and 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 and, and, uh, uh, and backlash, I guess you could say. Um, but I think it's useful for us to reflect on on the assessments of that people like Justin made of of the movement at at that point uh, because of the first quote that Jason read from 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 my essay that uh, the Rustin was a guy whose politics was always rooted in concrete strategy and was goal oriented and that's and his perspective I mean I don't believe in prescience but the perspective that he had on many of the tendencies in the early and mid mid 60s, even the late 60s, uh, because of the way that it was grounded in concrete practice and, and uh, strategic objectives, uh, um, helped him understand the limits of what uh, a lot of people are jumping up and down uh, and, and getting happy about. It. Is and I think, is it? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, is it immature for us to to try to throw Rustin out? Is it is it uh, because of his uh, informant at the end of his life, where he gets a little more right wing and and definitely right. becomes an informant? Is it is it uh, wrong for us to throw the the man out entirely? Well, oh uh, well, it's absolutely wrong to throw the man out because in the first place you shouldn't be looking at the damn man anyway, right? I mean, <laughs> it's, it's but, but the sense in which we are all political actors trying to make the world that we're in, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the problems that we have is um, the tendency to want to find somebody to revere, right? Like if we were, mm -hmm. you know, just listen to Rustin or if we just listen to Martin Delaney or if we just listen to Pygmy Arkham, right? Whatever, I mean. <laughs> um, but so, uh, so I think it's wrong and romance as for being immature, um, I would say that, except I know a lot of lefties from my cohort, even some older than I am, who, whose, whose views about Rustin and Rustin's arguments froze in 1964. And so it's, um, so, so unless it's an, a kind of immaturity that reflects going into second childhood, right, to something more, uh, uh, more problematic going on that, that, uh, than just being immature. But I think, yeah, I think it's politically uh, counterproductive and uh, you know, dilettante, basically, right? I mean, is Rustin speaking to a bit of immaturity in his in his essays in this, I think it's 1970, where he talks about, yeah. you know, hey, you guys love the Black Panthers, there's only a couple thousand of them. Right. Oh, man, yeah. I mean, that essay in particular, like, I've never seen that one before. Uh, and actually, you know what? That's the essay that prompted me to write the email, mm -hmm. because Ture will tell you that for as long as he can remember, he's, he's heard me saying that by 1970, probably half, half the Black Panthers were cops, right? Or thugs, mm -hmm. or cops and thugs. And then to see Rustin saying the same thing in the same year. Yeah. And I wasn't a Rustin fan at that point either, right? But I was somebody who had to deal with Panthers on the ground for Panthers, right? On the ground of my own work. Uh, and, and, and I've had that problem with them. I mean, and it, it's, it, it, it was, a, a, so, so Cedric Johnson, I'll give him a plug, um, because it's a great essay. Um, a dude, I think it was Wisconsin or somewhere, uh, maybe Canada, um, wrote a critique of Preston's, oh, sorry, of Cedric's, the Panthers can't save us essay a guy named Vernon that came out in uh, Catalyst. And Cedric just showed me the galleys of his response, which are great. Uh, he, mm -hmm. uh, he, he, he makes all the points that everyone needs to make at, at this particular juncture that, that we're at now. And I suggest all of your readers find that piece when it comes out. Uh, but I mention that because I've, I've said to Cedric before too, yeah, my nose is itching, man. Like, and I haven't been doing cocaine. <laughs> 
something. No, but I realized it must look like. Yeah, um, a little bit. A little Kokish. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Zizek. Zizekian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, what I've mentioned to Sabu before, uh, that I've always appreciated the nuance that he can bring to discussing the Panthers. And I agree with every bit of it. Uh, and I think it's partly because of my own history with them, and but probably more so you know, the half century in, in between of hearing so many different versions of the if, the if if police hadn't killed the Black Panthers, then we'd be free now. That 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 I hardly ever that I tend to focus more acting um, the uh, um, overstatement that than of giving them props, but. But the fact is, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, the Panthers, yeah, yeah, the Panthers I mean, obviously had some serious social presence in Oakland, and they had some in Chicago and a few other cities around, even Philadelphia, and even. But they were never the kind of force anywhere, pardon me, that Panther idolatry, that hot sauce forward, that Panther idolatry wants to make them or make them to have been. And frankly, especially when it comes from white people, um, you know, the Panther fetishism uh, you know, you know, really makes me think of the, anim of the Ralph Bakshi animated film, Fritz the Cat, which is uh, 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 about, uh, uh, um, he's a cat, but he's basically a middle-class white who gets alienated from his surroundings and wants to go find himself among the black people, basically. And I think there's a lot of it. And I think there's the fashion show aspect of it, which was the problem even then, man. I mean, uh, um, by, by, by the early 1970s, you could tell, right, that people were appropriating a lot of this stuff as fashion, the big ass, uh, the leather jacket, the beret, all kind of stood in for politics.